Welcome to Weekly Code Quickies. I'm your host, Norbert BM and founder of Code Quickies. Today, I'm going to bring you 10 best practice tips to manage your GitHub repositories. Before we get into them, why do we actually need to manage our GitHub repositories? Well, it's pretty simple because managing a GitHub repository effectively is essential for ensuring smooth collaboration, maintaining code clarity, and fostering a thriving open source community. Whether you're a seasoned developer or just starting out, adhering to the best practices can significantly enhance the productivity and success of your project. So here are some key practices to consider. At number one, we're going to have, now these are not in a specific order. I just have 10 tips that are also my personal tips. So at number one, we have clear repository structure. This is so important. When I was starting out using GitHub, I would just, well, like all of you, just have a complete mess. But establishing a clear and logical structure for your repository is essential. Organize your files and directories in a way that is intuitive for contributors to navigate. Just think about it. Don't leave a mess. You don't leave a mess in your room, so don't leave a mess in your repository. A well-structured repository makes it easier for others to understand your project and contribute effectively. Now, jumping into number two, this one I was always skipping is meaningful readme file. <laughs> the .md file, the markdown language, the simplest language that we have, and still we are not able to create a meaningful readme file. Your readme file is the first thing visitors see when they land on your repository. Just think about it. They open up your repository. The first thing that they see is the readme file and the readme file takes them through step-by-step -step instructions about what your repository is. So make it informative and engaging. Include essential information such as project descriptions. What is a project about? Describe it right there at the start. Installation instructions. Use examples, contribution guidelines, and of course, license details. A well-written readme.md can attract contributors and users to your projects. Also check out my readme files. They are a mess. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm working on them. Now at number three, we have consistent coding style. Again, consistency, like in real life. Enforce a consistent coding style across your project. Use tools like linters and code formatters to maintain uniformity in coding conventions. Yeah. Also, linters and code formatters like Prettier are already installed into Visual Studio Code. Did you know that if you open up a GitHub repository, for example, in a JavaScript file in GitHub, and you double click the dot dot on your keyboard, it's going to open it up in the Visual Studio Code browser version. Check this out. There's a pro tip for you. Now, consistency in coding styles enhances readability and makes collaboration smoother by reducing frictions caused by style differences. Just think about it. Think about it, how easy it is to read a consistent code style. So let's jump into number four, version control best practices. Leverage the power of Git by adhering to the version control best practices. Commit early and often with clear and descriptive commit messages. Now just typing in update something Tell it, what did you update in that something? Updated the nav bar. What exactly did you update in the nav bar? Updated the links in the nav bar. So you can, so when someone gets your push request, you can clearly see what you did or understand what you did. Now also use branches effectively to work on new features or bug fixes without disrupting the main code base. Also merge changes back into the main branch throughout pull requests after Burrow review, which brings us also back to write clear code so they can see what you did. So let's jump into number five, issue and pull request management. Encourage the use of issue to track bugs, features requests, and other tasks. Ensure that issues are described and well-defined to facilitate efficient resolutions. Similarly, actively manage pull requests by providing timely feedback, as I do, conductive code reviews, as I do, <laughs> and merging changes responsibly. Okay, let's go to tip number six. Implement continuous integration, CI, and 
deployment, which is CD, so continuous in integration, CI, and continuous deployment, which is CDs. These are pipelines to automate testing, building, and deployment processes. Services like GitHub Actions, Travis CI, or Circle CI can help ensure that changes introduced by contributors do not break the build and are deployed smoothly. Automate testing reduces the risk of regressions and maintains code clarity. So let's jump into tip number seven, which is one of my favorites, documentation. Documentation. Comprehensive documentation is crucial for understanding project functionalities, APIs, and implementation details. Now, when I create courses, I have to do so much documentation, not only for the, for the student, but also for me, the teacher, because I have to thoroughly document each little bit of explanation in order to really see, does it make sense? Will the student, does it make sense for me? Okay, but does it make sense for the student? So I cannot emphasize how important it is to have a clear documentation. People need to understand your code. That is why you need to document it. So document code using inline comments and generate API documentation using tools like Javadoc or Doxygen. Additionally, maintain external documentation or formats such as wikis or detected documentation websites. Now, if you're writing Visual Studio Code, for example, there's a extremely useful add-on which is called Better Comments. I use it whoa, for years now. It is extremely useful. Just try it. It's going to give you red comments, green comments, blue comments, to-dos. Oh yeah, that's also the to-do tree. Try that one out. Okay, so let's jump into tip number eight, which is license management. Why not? Choose an appropriate open source license for your project and include it prominently in your repository. Licensing clarifies how others can use modify and distribute your code, protecting both contributors and users. Choose a license that aligns with your project goals and encourage collaborations. And now jumping into number nine, which is security best practices. Now you have to stay secure, prioritize security by regularly update tendencies, coding security aud audits, and following secure coding practices. Enable automated security vulnerability scanning for your repository to identify and address potential security threats proactively. Now, before we get into tip number 10, I do want to mention that if you want to go more deeper into Git and GitHub management, or if you are just a total beginner, then my course Git and GitHub Essentials for version control and management is perfect for you. So please check it out by following the link in the description. And now coming to number 10, which is community engagement. Foster a welcoming and inclusive community around your project. Ha, this is funny. I also created a small little repository where there was that uh, blockchain <laughs> pipe where you can add, the, the, the whole repository is adding a block to the chain. That's, that's all it does and it cannot be duplicated. And well, it's just a perfect example. It's also in, in, included in my course. That is a perfect example of just making a simple contribution. You're going to include your name and your GitHub account. And that's it. So people can find you. It's actually a community builder. Chain or community. Now, encourage res respectful communication. Provide guidance to new contributors and recognize the contributors of community members. This is also what I did with that blockchain. It's called Barneycoin, I believe. <laughs> I didn't, didn't even check it out. I just accept everyone who's contributing there. Uh, yeah, but it, that's a, acknowledging the contributor. The contributor actually contributes his own name and people can find him then. Okay, so actively, pra participate, so actively participate in discussions, address concerns promptly and cultivate a positive atmosphere conducive to collaboration. So if this was informative for you, then please consider becoming a subscriber to our channel, blog posts, podcasts. We are all over the place. Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts. Give this please a thumbs up. Leave a review. Paste a comment. Ask questions or suggestions for future videos. Also, if you want to support us even more deeply, then you can check out our courses. They are linked down in the description. And with this being said, I wish you all a productive day. My name is Norbert BM. Bye-bye.